Good afternoon all. Here we go. That's it. It's all done. There we go. Well, it's all done. I'm saying that it's done. It's all put back together. It's playing all right, but when you put it on record, it's blanking off the tape, so it's erasing the tape. But when I plug a microphone in, it's not picking up the signal from the mic. I haven't tried the radio gramophone yet. I'm going to plug in a CD player into that and try to record a CD onto it. Uh, but yeah, see what you do on this, you switch that to record. Could be dirty contacts. I don't know, might be. I should have cleaned all the pots inside. I didn't, but it's easy to take off again. Oh, God. Or it could be the head. Because it's got these uh, bogan heads. Because Brunel changed from their own manufactured heads to bogan heads. Which were susceptible to damp. And they had a shellac um, varnish painted over the coils. And if you kept it in a damp or over the, over the years the shellac broke down. And affected the coils and caused an open circuit. So it could be. I mean the erase head is okay on this side over there. But uh, it could be the record replay head and they, I've had another Brunel before and they've gone bad open circuit and it didn't even play back anything so it's playing back but it could be the record side of the head that's dodgy I don't know whether you know what I haven't even seen inside a head before I don't even know if there's two coils in there is there two separate coils one for record and playback does anyone know leave in the comments please if you know if there's two coils one for record or play or is there only one coil that does both I don't know I really don't know if there's only one coil that does both, then it's not the, the head, if you see what I mean. If there's two coils and one's open, then it would be the head. But that's the next thing to try. But I've plugged in a mic and it's erasing the tape and accidentally erased over one of my songs here, one of these Joe Meek songs, but it doesn't matter. I can re-record this tape on another machine. So it doesn't, no big deal really. But anyway, you want to hear it? Yeah, okay, I do. Yeah, the magic eye comes on when you put it into record and... Uh, it fluctuates when you plug in the mic and talk that fluctuates according to the volume of the voice whatever so that all works but it's stopping it going onto the tape somewhere along the line so i don't know that's the only problem it's got at the moment oh another thing this um these knobs they're horrible these knobs these rhomboid knobs they're called no matter how much you tighten that screw in there you just turn it a few times and it becomes loose again terrible knobs I think you're better off really uh, is to put one of these plug-in knobs, you know, just want to push on knob. Because this thing keeps, look, it's even coming off again. And I did up really tight. Next job I'm going to do is get some PTFE tape, the plumbers use, and just put a bit around the shaft and see if it holds on better. But look, it's slipping again already. I can't believe this. No matter how hard you do it, same with a rewind as well. Terrible. Same thing with these sort of type of knobs. Rhomboid knobs. Don't know. They should have used some form of grub screw and uh, some sort of another uh, contact area on the inside, a little bit softer, not just metal to metal. Because look, look, it's coming off again. No matter how tight I do this knob up, does look. I oh, oh, can't do it one-handed. I've got the phone in my hand. Bloody thing! I'm trying to tighten it up with this tiny little screwdriver and trying to find the frigging screw. It's a nightmare. It's there somewhere. But be careful you don't snap it. You can break these knobs if you tighten it too much. But if you don't tighten it too much, look, see this phone. I don't know if I'm pointing at the thing there because these iPhones are crap. Wherever I point it, it doesn't come out on the video when I upload it to YouTube. I don't know what's going on with this bloody phone. The camera is situated in a really bad place. No, I can't do this single handed. Oh shit. Hang on a minute. Oh, how do I do this? I'll leave it, so I'll do it afterwards. I can't be bothered doing it now. I'll just lift it a little while because I don't want it rubbing on the surface there. I think what you really need to do is get some, you know those corn pads, those little round felt corn pads and put them underneath the shaft so it doesn't rub on there. A lot, see, the camera's pointed in the wrong place again. Now, is it, can you see the knob there? Hope so, because when I add it, you can't see it. Oh God, in the camera screen, I can see it. I can see the knob. But probably when I replay it on YouTube, you won't see it. I don't know what's going on. If you notice, a lot of my videos are like that. So it's these stupid iPhones. So, as I said, I don't want it rubbing on the writing and rubbing them off. So I don't know. Is there any trouble with these? Oops, right there. Did you hear that? It's this frigging knob. 
Hang on, let me put the phone. I can't put the phone down when I'm recording. Let's try to tighten it a little bit. Bugger, these things are. It's only things about these Brunelos, only problems, these stupid knobs they put on. So I, I know you can't see nothing for the minute, but I can't do two things at once here. It's impossible. I don't even know if I've got it on the screw. Why is this so hard to do? Right, no, I can't do it properly. See, I'm touching another contact in there. Well, look, look, it's still loose. Look, I tighten it again, it's still loose. Look, it's a bloody nuisance with these things. Right, I'll have to leave it for now. All right, then, um, let me replay this tape. I was going to redo the recording, I can't be bothered. Right, let's replay what I've got on here. Here we go. <laughs> When the mist surrounds it and the rain is falling and the wind is blowing and cold across the moor, I hear the voice of my darling, the girl I loved Sounds good. last a year ago. To believe I know that I hear her singing in the sign of the wind blowing in the treetops way above me. Yes, I'll always remember till the day I die. Someday I guess I find myself another little girl to take the place of my true love. But as long as I live, I know I'll hear her singing the sign of the wind blowing in the trees. Right, I don't know how the copyright's going to affect this video, I really don't know. I put it together last night, this deck, and um, I've mentioned it, see, the way it's come off so easily. I don't know, it's just an ordinary D-shaped shaft on that. So you could use like a push-on knob, you know, one of these push-on knobs with the uh, metal ring in there, on one of these, but then you won't get the authenticity of this, unless there's a way you can push one of those little D-shaped rings in there, I don't know. If anyone's got any ideas, let me know. Or if you can get any push-on knobs like this, that rhomboid shape. They also call them coffin-shaped knobs. For obvious reasons. There we go. Um, right. Yeah, everything all works. Rewind, fast-forward. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, see those knobs? Look, see, no matter what you do. But um, anyway, this used to be uh, Professor Ian Parrott. He was a uh, music scholar. A scholar? That's right from Aberystwyth University and this was his machine and it was non-working when I got it nothing was working actually at all on this had knobs all seized up all the mechanism so you know the usual suspects normal things that went wrong that goes wrong with these machines you know uh, hasn't been used for years obviously it's getting nice and warm these hot valves in there 
<laughs> there we go, let's try the fast forward. Should all be working fine. Love that noise. Yep, brakes all right, no spillage. That's good. Look at that, silky, smooth and fast. Perfect, look at the brakes on it. Top. Top. Top ho, I was going to say. Oh, top ho. Look at that, perfect. Wow. Actually erased the portion of this by accident. Twat, never mind. There we go, so uh, yeah. Let me rewind this tape actually. That noise is so old school, isn't it? Look at the speed of that damn thing. Holy Christ. Oh, just stop it. Look at that break as sharp and efficient. Oh, I'll tell you what, one tip. Now this applies with all reel-to-reel -reel machines, uh, including the Ferrograph, because I actually snapped, well, it was about 90% snapped the tape it was a Beatles tape an original and what I did wrong I put one large reel on this side a big seven inch reel and the small of course there's small little reels the uh, Beatles ones so wrong thing to do always use the same type of reels the same size because I had a seven inch on this early on when I was playing my scratch I call it a scratch tape we used to call it in the computer field years ago when we had uh, you know the tape drive machines mainframes this is we used to call them scratch tapes. That's an empty tape. So um, we got to do is put a reel on the same size as the feed tape. Always remember that. I mean that's exactly the same size as that, so you don't get spillage. But I actually put the seven-inch one on the ferrograph and the small Beatles one on the other one. And, and what happened when I stopped the rewind? Yep, it snatched the tape. Bang! Nearly broke it in half. It I had to put a bit of splicing tape on the back of it just to hold it together. And actually, you can't even hear where the brake is on the oxide. It's pretty good. Uh, there we go. That's it. That's, uh, this is the Brunel Mark V S2. It's just got a slight recording issue now. And I need to sort these knobs out properly. So I don't know. Can someone tell me if a record playback head has got one coil in it that does both operations, the record and the playback, or is there two separate coils? That's what I need to know. Uh, I don't think there's anything on um, Google out there, but if not, then it's something here. It's probably it could be a bad valve. Maybe one of the valves is bad somewhere along the line, or another component. I don't know what else can it be. It could be a dodgy resistor, maybe. Maybe a resistor's open circuit going to the record side of things. I don't know. I've got to take it out again one day and just check all the resistors and uh, anything too high, too low, just change them out. So it's still work in progress in a way, but it's basically working. So there we go. And listen how quiet it is. Turn the volume there, look. You probably hear the fridge, my fridge there. It's probably louder. No humming, no bad humming or anything. So the filter capacitor is absolutely fine. That's that Hunt's filter cap on the power supply. I was going to change it out, but I think it's probably reformed by now. There's no humming at all now. No. Dead silent. Now, look, I've got the volume up halfway. You can't even hear that. Now you can. Perfect. Right. I think I'll. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Shall I leave that tape? I think I'll play some more tapes actually. Oh, uh, not. No. Let me take this tape off. No. Oh, too soon, Harvey. Too soon. Right, I'm going to get a bit of PTFE tape, man, and try to wrap it around the shafts on these three. Look, see how easily that's come off? Just wrap it around the shaft. Look, it's ordinary D-shape. I know you can get these knobs that have got the little spring inside with a D-shape and just push them on. Ah, oh, the trouble is I like to keep the originality of these things. Anyway, I'm going to try a bit of PTFE tape and retighten these stupid screws. They're not even grub screws. They've got ordinary... You can't see it. Can you see it? Ordinary... BA screws in there, slot screws, that's all they are. And if you keep doing that, tightening and tightening, eventually the screwdriver is going to slip and mess up the uh, screw heads. Thinking about it, hang on a minute, I think I bought the same 
size screw but as a grub screw right I'm going to put a bit of PTFE tape around the shaft and I might try to find my grub screws if I can find them now as I bought them ages ago actually and try some grub screws in there that might do the job but anyway pretty pleased for what I've, you know what I've done so far I mean I haven't done too bad just reset the counter that all works and make a nice cup of tea you know right there we go hope you enjoyed this video and uh, sure uh, catch you later I don't know when I'm gonna work on this again to get the actual uh, signal onto the tape that's the only problem I've got at the moment but what I need to find out is does a record playback head have one coil that does both functions or is there two coils that's what I need to know and once I know there's only one coil then I can concentrate on the amp there's something here it could be a bad context maybe these contacts haven't been used for years and years which they probably haven't and it could be just a bad connection on the jacks underneath I should have really um, use some switch cleaner fluid and all these contacts but I was in a rush to get this all back together so there we go oh yeah what I was saying earlier under here last night they take it all apart again I put it together quite early and then I take it apart again because underneath this switch right here there's a little screw and it's not a grub screw again it's a bloody a slot screw and it becomes loose after a while I mean what should have advised people is use a bit of uh, Loctite and you put a bit of Loctite on the screw and then screw it in because the screw comes loose again every time you turn this backwards and forwards the grub screw become the sorry the slot screw becomes loose and uh, then what you're going to do when you go from playback camera get over there when you go from playback to stop you've got to turn it another little quarter turn to get it on the stop because it's not lined up right because that screw keeps becoming loose underneath uh, yeah so what it should have really I mean what I should have done when the deck was out but I forgot all about that problem you see because I leave things for a year for about a year or two years sometimes before I go back to it but what I should have done is taken the screw out put a bit of Loctite on it or I think Andy suggested super glue put a bit of super glue on the thread and screw it in quickly before it dries but I should have just tried Loctite but what I did last night I was looking for some uh, Humbrol paint you know those little tins of paint used for the model aircraft uh, enamel paint wherever they are and I couldn't find it so I used a bit of uh, nail varnish <laughs> so I put a bit of nail varnish in it but I thought no I'm not sure if this is going to hold then I found the Humbrol paint so I've got a long skinny brush I lifted all this up again and I didn't want to take it all off again so I lifted up about two inches and I stuck a little paintbrush in there with some paint. I got a bit somewhere else, but I've managed to get off with uh, a bit of that stuff. What do you call it? Acetone. And um, I put a bit of paint over the, the screw now. So hopefully that will hold. And I left it overnight to dry. It, so it should be okay. should be fine. That screw might not move. It might, it might not. I don't know. It might just break the paint off. I don't know. Only time. Oops, I just knocked the phone. Sorry about that. Only time will tell. So, I don't know. Anyway, let's find a PTFE tape and go from there. Talk to you all later. Bye for now.